Hello and welcome back to this free series where you'll learn how to produce better music and mixes in Logic Pro 10. In this video you're going to learn more about the EQ inside Logic Pro because the stock plugins inside Logic are incredible. You really don't need to upgrade for a long long time. So in this video you're going to learn how to use that EQ and learn a bit more about EQ in general uh, and also the special features of the Logic Pro EQ that I love and that I wanted to show you so that you can start making your mixes sound clearer. Start approaching EQ more efficiently and effectively using the stock Logic plugin. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the full course. There's a link in the description below, and that's gonna go into much more detail into every other aspect of Logic Pro. And if you enjoy this video, you're gonna love that. But for now, let's jump into Logic and take a look at the EQ. Now the Logic EQ is one of my favorite stock EQs, if not the favorite stock EQ. So it's called Channel EQ. There are a few different types that I'm gonna talk about in a second. But channel EQ is the main one. And you can also see that in this window here. So you don't even have to add it as a plugin. You can just click that window and it will add it for you and open this up. Now this window is really helpful because as soon as I start adding cuts and boosts, you can see them uh, in this little window. So that's really handy when you know, you're know getting towards the end of the mix and every channel or nearly every channel has got a tiny bit of EQ on it. You can just at a glance see what's going on. So this is the Logic EQ window. And you can see quite a few options up here. But before I talk about them, you need to have an understanding of what an EQ is. And essentially an equalizer is just a tool that raises or lowers the volume of different frequencies rather than of the sound uh, as a whole. So the most obvious example is in your car or in your hi-fi or in your, your speaker system, your iPod dock, whatever it is, you can obviously increase the bass and then this increases the low end and the rumble and the bit that you can feel. Or you can increase the treble and this increases the top end, kind of the, the clarity, um, sometimes brittle if you boost it too much. And bass and treble are just kind of opposite ends of the frequency spectrum. Now this EQ says 20 here and 20K up here. And this is the audible human range of hearing. So we can hear 20 hertz, and this is what this number represents, cycles per second or hertz. Uh, the same as light, but much lower. And this is 20 hertz, which is, you know, no one can really hear that. I think elephants can hear that and they use that to communicate. But for us, we don't really hear 20. You can hear 30, you can feel 20, but you can't really hear it. And then up here, 20,000 um, is the other end. And that's where it's supersonic, you know, bats use that, dog whistles are above here. But for us, it tends to tail off about 16K. But we, when you're you know, a very young child, perhaps you can hear above that. As you get older, the highest frequency that you can hear gradually reduces until when you start having hearing problems when you're old. That's because you can't really hear anything above you know, 10, 12K. So some people will be able to hear this end. Some people won't. Everyone will be able to hear the very low end um, if you've got good speakers. And that's the problem here is that below 50 hertz, you need a subwoofer really to hear this, but we can still mix without a subwoofer. You can still hear it on most speakers. So that's the frequency spectrum. We've got bass down here, we've got treble up here, and in between we've got low mids between you know 200 uh, and 1000, and then we've got high mids between 1000 and around 10,000. Or maybe a bit lower, I'd say high mids ends about 8,000 but it breaks down into low, middle, and high, and then the middle also breaks down into low mids and high mids. So that's what this graph represents. And now what we can do is boost certain frequencies. So we can boost the bass, or we can boost the treble, or we can boost the high mids or the low mids, or we can cut. But not only that, we can also adjust the amount that we're cutting or boosting like so. So we can either just boost a very, very thin part where we're only boosting that frequency, which is 340 Hertz and some of them around it. Or we can do a really wide boost where we're boosting around 340, but we have a really gentle slope going off where we're still boosting even up to 10K and we're still boosting down at 20, just a tiny bit. Now these figures down here represent the amount that we're cutting or boosting by in decibels, so 5 dB, 10 dB, etc. So what do all these different buttons mean? And there's different ways as well, different types of EQ. So this is called a, a, a band or a bell EQ. Let me turn that off. This is called a shelf EQ, and you'll see that this actually just 
boosts everything below it and or cuts it and then we've also got a high shelf which does the same thing up here so rather than a band eq which you know tails off a shelf will boost or cut everything above it like so and then we also have these two which is called a filter so this is a high pass filter and then we're literally cutting out everything below a certain frequency and we can we can control the the kind of the slope and the angle of the slope um, or we can cut everything above like this so you have filters shelves and bands or bell eq some people call these notch eqs as well there's a few different names so let's reset that to default what we can also do is use the analyzer to see what's going on so if i solo the kick and then play it So now we can actually see what frequencies are evident in that kick. So you can see that nothing above really 250. And most of it's centered around here, around 66, 64. And then we've got a bit more here, another kind of hump here. So you can hear that's kind of the resonance and then down here that's the the fundamental resonant of the drum but of course there is still content up here so if i slowly bring this down you'll hear um, the sound changing even though it looks like on the analyzer there's no frequencies you'll hear it So in my opinion, that's why you need to be careful with analyzers because they can they can kind of trick you into thinking that there's not stuff there or that you know certain frequencies are too loud. You might look at that and say, oh God, 60 hertz is far too loud. We need to cut that. But in fact, that's not the case. It's just because that instrument and in this case, that drum and the skin and the wood and the size of the drum are all resonating and that frequency. So that's the fundamental frequency and you could cut that but what that actually tells us is that really we want to leave that in and we want to cut that on other stuff because if the kick drum is resonating at 60 hertz, we want to cut that in the bass guitar to make sure it's not fighting for that. So that's when the analyzer is helpful to see where instruments are centered because the bass guitar now, if we have a look at that, is going to be slightly different. And because we're playing notes here, of course, the frequency changes depending on the note, but you could see it was mostly above, you know, 60. And of course, there's a lot more high frequency content uh, in the low mids. And again, loads of stuff up here too. So you cut and you boost using these if you want to cut and boost everything above or below a certain frequency, use the shelf. Uh, anything that's kind of a guitar or a high pitched instrument, I recommend adding a shelf like that. Anything that's low, you know, you don't need to add a high cut. You can just leave it. Um, and it's still helpful just to add a tiny little cut there, um, even on drums or bass, because listen to how this tightens it up. Because what we're doing is removing the low frequency content, which is the most powerful, that's making it sound kind of flabby, uh, and tighten it up a bit. So there are other EQs in Logic. We've also got the linear phase EQ, which looks the same. And this is good for adding EQ uh, to your master bus or to you know a whole mix. Because normal EQ, even if you boost at 200, it will affect other frequencies in a very slight way. And that's why it's best to use as little EQ as possible. I don't recommend boosting or cutting by more than 5 um, to 10 dB. A lot of the time, just a 3 dB boost is enough to mold the sound. But with linear phase EQ, it works in a slightly different way. So that 
we can be a bit more aggressive. So if you boost to 5 dBs on a linear phase EQ, it won't affect the rest of the spectrum as much. So that's why it's really good for mastering and applying EQ to your master bus. There's also the match EQ, which helps us to um, match two different instruments. Um, not really that useful, to be honest. And then single band EQ is great if you just want to add um, a low cut or something like that, save on processing. Um, and also this is a really good way if you know that it doesn't need EQ. So say this electric guitar, for example, sounds really good. If I added a fully parametric like this, just because I wanted to add a low cut just to clean it up, I'd then be really tempted to use all of these other bands. Whereas instead of that, uh, I could just use a single band EQ. Be like, no, nope, all I want to do is just add a low cut um, at 60 hertz. And then we save on processing power and we're not tempted to start playing around. That's it for today. So I recommend now that you go and implement this stuff. Go and play around with the stock EQ inside Logic. And if you really want to advance your skills quickly with EQ, the best way you can do that is by sitting down for focused practice. Don't just mix randomly and just every time you record a track, just mix it and kind of expect to improve that way. You'll improve so much faster if you actually sit down and practice these techniques. Practice using EQ. Pull up a kick drum and try and make it sound five different ways just using an equalizer. And practice achieving different things. That's going to help you to make progress so much quicker than if you just play around with these in the heat of a mix and never really learn these tools. Now, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to check out the full course. There's a link in the description below. And that's a complete guide to using Logic Pro 10. So if you wanna get really confident at using Logic Pro 10 so you can focus more on the music and focus more on the stuff that matters, be sure to check that out. I'm Rob Mazes of musicianonmission.com and I'll see you again soon.